Glory to the Lord. All his lifetime. We recently he's been with us. Of course, we don't know that. We were pleased that he was able to preach his first sermon after his wife's death here at Galilee Baptist Church. And I'm glad he's able to come back and preach to us again today. After Michelle sings for us, Brother Preston will come, take the pulpit, and preach what God's laid on his heart. Thank you, Michelle. What a beautiful job on the song. <coughs>
Dr. Preston Moore, come to you. You looking good for 99. <laughs> Bless you. Let's give him a warm welcome, gentlemen. Well, it is good to be back in Galilee. Amen. And meet with you people. I always enjoy coming here. I love this church and what it stands for. I always get a blessing. I love Brother Rex. I don't like him as good as I do Jessica, but I do like him. Amen. He's a true man of God. And I appreciate the honor that he would invite me to come and preach for him. I preached for the Lord this morning, and uh, I'll do my best. The Lord kept me up most of the night last night about this service today. I feel somehow there's a, an urgency in this service. And I trust the Lord will do what only God can do. We all need to hear from heaven. Amen. All of us do. Some have one need and some another, but we all have needs. And in fact, we all have needs from things we can only get from God. And uh, so I trust that I'll be a blessing and uh, you'll get a blessing. I appreciate some of the family, our kin folks coming and being here today. They ought to be here every Sunday or somewhere. I guess they are. Glad to see Trina back there. Trina, uh, she's got her new husband. I don't know if he's any good. I don't know him. <laughs> but, uh, she's a fine girl. She sure is. And the owner said she was a, just a young girl. And, uh, so that's, uh, we glad to have her as that each and every one. Now you pray for me that the Holy Ghost will anoint what I say. I don't want to say one word God don't want me to say. But I want to say every word he does want me to say. And I want to say it in the right spirit. Truth without spirit can cause damage. But uh, I love the Holy Spirit. I tell him every day and every night, I love him. I love his presence. I love what he does for us. I love the Lord Jesus. I tell him several times a day and night that I love him. I love God who sent him, this Father that sent him. And it's such a blessing to be born here in America, this part of the country, and hear about Jesus all of my life. And the more I know about him, the better I love him. I think I want to preach today on asking. You know, the Bible said, ask, seek and you shall find, ask and it will be open unto you. Knock and it will be open. A lot of times we don't have because we don't ask. And sometimes when we ask, we ask in the wrong spirit. But I believe I'm preaching to a congregation of people that want God to uh, be God in their life. And they want to do what he wants them to do. We're in the king's house. Amen. Amen. You go to church, you're not just going to a building, you're going to the king's house. That's why when you come to church, you ought to look your best, do your best, because uh, we're here and the Lord's here. I know he's here. In fact, even the Bible said, we're two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And I appreciate that. I want you to turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 14, and we're going to look at some scripture, and you pray for me, and I pray that God would speak to every heart, and 
And I have no doubt that in the congregation this size, there's someone here that's lost, that don't know God. I don't know whether they're a part of the church or not a part of the church, but I usually when real revival, real Holy Ghost revival comes, sometimes it's amazing at the people you see that get saved. Uh, that you would have thought, why well, they're just fine. Yeah. Now I hope everyone here is saved. And if you're not saved, I hope you get saved before you leave. And uh, all the other people that are saved hope the same thing. Uh, I'm going to read starting in verse 22 of chapter 14. And I want to read you a story and uh, then give you the thought that's on my heart. And they had just ate, and they had fed several thousand. And the Bible said, and straightway in verse 22, Matthew 14, 22, and straightway Jesus constrained or forced his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away. They were exhausted. They had fed this crowd. They had been there a long time. A lot of things had happened and uh, the Lord insisted that they get into a ship and go before him unto the other side. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. He was up on the mountain. The ship was down in the sea. So from where he was, he could see the ship. They might not could have seen him, but he could have seen them. Amen. I'm glad he can see us, aren't you? Amen. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. <clears throat> and then the outspoken apostle. Who is that? Peter. Peter. He always had something to say, right or wrong. He always had voiced his opinion. But here he said, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now let me tell you what Peter asked him for. We're talking about asking. Peter asked him for the impossible. You know, we feel like sometimes you strain God if you ask him for too much. But in the history of the human family, no human being had ever walked on the water that we have any record of. But Simon Peter, something within him, when he saw Jesus walking on the water, it gave him that desire, and he said, Lord, if it be you, now he better be sure it's the Lord. Yeah. But Lord, if it be you, bid, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. As I said, no one had ever done that before. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He walked on the water. That's the first time that it ever happened that a man, just a human man, had walked on the water to go to Jesus. Now, a lot of people like to talk about when he began to sink, but I like to think about when he walked. I like to think about the miracle that happened when Peter stepped over on the side of that boat and stepped down on that 
sea where a storm was brewing. The wind was blowing. The waves were rocking. But he had enough confidence in Jesus that he wanted to try to walk on the water. And he walked off of that ship and I probably to his amazement when he walked on the ship, I walked on the water, he didn't sink for a while. He didn't sink until he began to look at the circumstance. That's what happens to us a lot of time. We look at the circumstance instead of looking to Jesus. And when he began to look at the circumstance, he began to sink and he said, Lord, save me. I believe well, the Lord had let him walk far enough from the ship. I know when he started sinking, he couldn't get back to the ship. He was closer to Jesus than he was the ship. And so he took the best route and decided, I'll go toward Jesus. And I will tell you, that's what we need to do. Amen. When trouble comes and things happen in our life that we don't understand, and our hearts are broken, and we're challenged like we've never been challenged before. Jesus is nearby. Amen. He's nearby. He never leaves us. Amen. He never forsakes us. Amen. And uh, here we find the man that did the impossible. And we can do the impossible. I wouldn't say we could walk on the water. By the way, I believe everybody on that boat could have walked on the water. Peter was the only one that said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come on the water. The other fellows that they said, bid us come to the Lord. He said, come on. I don't think that's what they said. I said, they say, I think they thought, Peter's going to drown. I know how he acts. And here one time he's overloaded himself and now here we are on this boat. Not only is the boat about to sink, he thinks he can walk without the boat. And we're going to see, this is the last of him, he's going to glub, 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 go down and that'll be the last of him. But he did the impossible. And God wants us to believe him that we can do things that the world thinks that it is impossible. Amen. All the way through the Bible, we find people doing the impossible. We find people doing the impossible. I thought about when Lazarus died in John chapter 11. Lazarus died. Jesus was somewhere on a mission trip and uh, had not come back. And Lazarus had died. They sent out to Jesus and he got the message but he didn't come. I really believe, brother pastor, now you straighten me out, but I really believe Mary was offended that he didn't come. She sat still in the house, and when Jesus walked up on the ground, Martha stepped out and saw the Lord Jesus. And she said, Lord, if thou hadst have been here, my brother would not have died. Now that's faith, isn't it? My brother would. But I love the next verse. He wouldn't have died, Lord, if you'd been here. But even now, I know what you ask the Father, he'll give it to you. Now that's, that's another impossible situation. He has been dead four days. By now they said he stinketh. You ever been around anybody that stunk? <laughs> Smell around by you and see if you <laughs> see anybody that stinks. Amen. Amen. I believe all that. Clean up every once in a while, don't you? My daughter, I remember when she was at home, she'd take the longest showers. And if I, I'd beat on the door every once in a while, I'd say, Honey, hurry up, the county's running out of water. 
But uh, here we find people that uh, Lazarus is dead. And uh, everybody's weeping. And Jesus walks up on the crowd. And Martha has enough faith to believe something big may be fixing to happen. That's where y'all come to church. Yeah. Amen. Y'all not to come in here half caught. <laughs> y'all get out of your car. In fact, y'all start to get on. But y'all to say, how many of you remember Galilean? Raise your hand. Y'all left home this morning and said, man, I can't wait for the day. Ain't no telling what's going to happen today, but it's going to be good. Yeah. Amen. That ain't what you said. You said, I wonder how long Preacher Moore is going to preach. <laughs> Amen. Well, I do believe the worst death you could die would be preached to death. I've heard preachers preach, and I thought, if he don't quit, I ain't going to make it. <laughs> Amen. But I know the Lord's here this morning, and I know he wanted to preach this message. And here's Lazarus laying out there in the tomb, and everybody knows that the stone's there, and, and, and that the neighbors are weeping with the family. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? Where have you laid him? And they all went out to the cemetery. And there's a stone rolled away. It's up there. He said, roll away the stone. He said, the, what you've done Get that out of the way. Yes. And everybody's standing around and listening. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Yes. And everybody's listening. And here comes somebody out of that grave. But he come out bound. And Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Amen. Now, if somebody here this morning's lost and they don't know anything about church and they get born again this morning, there's going to be a lot of things that's got them bound that they don't understand. And it's this church and this pastor and the leadership of this church to be able to say, let us loose him from the things that's hindered him and let him go. Amen. Amen. It's called people get saved. That don't mean they got problems somewhere else. Something that needs to be done. You got any problems this morning? Raise your hand if you got some problems. Most of us have got some problems. Amen. Some of you come in here this morning. I thought, Lord God, have I got to preach to that crowd. <laughs> But every once in a while I see somebody, Brother Rex, sort of smile, and I think, well, maybe that one's saved. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I get thrilled about going to church. Now, I pastored this one, I pastored different churches, 57 years, but one church, 45 years. And I got excited when it got church time. Yeah. I didn't say, Oh, Lord. I'm like the old preacher, John Fowler. One morning he told his wife, he had an old country church, and, and uh, out in the country he told his wife, he said, I don't think I'm going to church this morning. She said, John, you've got to go. He said, you're the pastor. <laughs> he said, well, I don't want to go. He said, there's too many hypocrites down there. And she said, I'll go on, John. One more won't matter. <laughs> How many of us come to church and we're just a bunch of cute little hypocrites? <laughs> you almost had fuss on the way home from church. Can't find the kid's shoe. You know. We're going over to Mother's to eat today after church. No, we go over there all the time. I don't even like your mom. <laughs> Say amen right there. 
Amen. I believe one of the hardest things in the world to do is be a mother-in-law. I had a good mother-in-law, amen. It's 11, my wife was one of 11 children. That's a whole sack full. You know, but I, my in-laws, I love them and they loved me. And I mean, in all those years, we never had a cross word. Amen. And, uh, of course, I sort of worked on things, you know. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. All the way through the Bible. One time, God got so fed up with the human family, he said, I'm tired. <laughs> he said, I'm, I'm just going to destroy a man from the earth that I've created. We're just going to shut it down. And he meant it. But Noah, yeah, come on. listen to this, come on now. found grace yeah. in the eyes of the Lord. Now, it didn't say he showed up. He said he found it. That meant he looking for it. Yeah, right. That meant when he heard God say, well, gonna, he began to search and see if there was something, some way that he could find, that he could find grace in God that God would spare us. Everybody said, thank God for Noah. Amen. Amen. You wouldn't be here if that had been for him. Yeah. When he built the ark, actually the ark was his family's house. God said, build you and your family a house, an ark. And he moved in it. And all the way through the Bible, we find things were very impossible. When the Children of Israel went through the Red Sea on dry ground. One modern preacher said it wasn't the Red Sea, it was the Reed Sea. And it wasn't but six inches deep. Well, I find a greater miracle than he did. I believe they went through on dry ground to a million, and I believe he believed the whole Egyptian army drowned in four inches of water. <laughs> The Bible's easy to believe if you're born again yeah. and you love the Bible. Amen. So many things we can look at and say it's impossible. It's impossible to go to heaven without the blood. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. All the blood of Jesus Christ. If they went out of the Mayo Clinic, he's alive today, and they'd have drawn blood from Jesus, they'd have said, there ain't never been no blood like that. Right. You see, he didn't have an earthly father. Yeah, but, yeah. The Holy Ghost was his father. Yeah. And when the Holy Ghost moved on Mary and planted inside her body the baby of the Lord Jesus, that was clear, pure blood. Amen. That blood. I remember the night it was applied to my heart. I'm going to quit now when I want to in a minute. <laughs> my older brother Talbert, he's not here today. I don't know where he is. I ain't gonna fuss on him. He's going on 90 years old. <laughs> the amazing thing is, he's got a girlfriend. <laughs> and she's pretty. She can't see good. <laughs> I, I don't know if she's here today or not, but listen. Is she here? Well, I'm glad she and her. Listen, I'm not fool with it. Amen. Of course, I love him. He's down at the house yesterday. Amen. My brother Talbert is the best friend I ever had. Amen. He sent me to the first church. And then once in a while, I'd get some crazy idea, and he'd work on me about it. I appreciate it. Thank God for your pastor. Amen. Amen. 
No ducks can swim faster than the leaf. Now, I love you, and I don't want to meddle on you. But it broke my heart when I come down the road today and have a car, have a yard full of cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, we can't get them to come. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, yes, you can get them to come. How many of you say, preacher, if you give me a thousand dollars, I'll get one of them to come tonight. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> say, we're filling up the church. <laughs> Did you know that one soul is worth the whole world? And you drive right by them in your sanctimonious Christian and Christian so forth. Religion. And you never stop. I'm meddling now. Who got my check? I will get it now. Dr. Curtis Hudson was preaching a revival. About the third night, they come up in the yard, him and the pastor come out. They had a house right over there. They were out in the yard working. Dr. Hudson said, does he go to church? The preacher said, no. He said, I don't know him. Dr. Hudson said, how long have you been here? He said, well, a little over two years. But I don't know who he is. Dr. Hudson said, if you don't mind, I'd like to go and speak to him. This actually happened. This ain't just a preacher's story. Yeah. Dr. Hudson went over and talked to the fellow a little bit. Said, I'm preaching a revival over here at this church. Said, I don't believe you've ever been, have you? No, sir. He said, I've been. I've never been over there. He said, well, wouldn't you like to go? Well, he said, yeah. I, I don't go to church, but I'd like to go, but I... I don't know if I'm welcome over there or not. And Dr. Curtis said, I want you to be my guest tonight. Amen. I want you to go with me. I want you to sit by me until it's time to preach. And we'll go out to eat. And that man got saved that night. Amen. Amen. That actually happened. Do you care about people going to heaven? Does it really bother you that people burn forever and ever in hell? I don't need to get over on that side, but it is the truth. How many of you got loved ones, as far as you know, they're lost? Raise your hand. If my mother was lost, she's in heaven now. But my daddy had been lost, and I knew it. I had a brother right now that was lost. There says one of my brothers, a good preacher. He says my sister, a good singer. Yeah. Other relatives. And all of that. But if one of them was lost, I'd follow them like a bloodhound until they got saved. Oh, you mean you're going to sit on that pew and let your daddy go to hell? Mm -hmm. no. Or your mother? I want you a children. You say, well, I might, I might hurt their feelings. Well, good. I remember Talbert told me, I never had been to this church. He was about 18 years old. He had that man. He passed the Glen Hill Church. He'd been there about six months, and he'd come to the house one day. And he said, Preston said, God saved him down at the church pretty regularly. He said, I baptized down there in the Yellow River about every month. He said, I want to see you go to church. And I want to see you get saved. I want to see you baptized in the Yellow River. I said, let me tell you something, buddy. You may be the oldest boy in the Moore family, but it's going to take a bigger man than you are to put me in the Yellow River. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm But he and then had talked me into it one time, and I went down there. And when I went in, I didn't know he'd been telling the church to pray for me. 
He said, my younger brother may come and he's got so much pride. If we don't get him the first time, we may never get him. So I went out and then sat down. And now I know the preacher's good looking brother come in, sat down there. <laughs> and moved around a little bit. After a while, side door opened. And some old men come in the side door. Wiping their eyes. I didn't know they'd been out there in the grove praying for me. I didn't know my loud mouth brother had been saying, we got to get him the first time. After a while, here comes some women out of this side, wiping tears out of their I think a couple of them was wiping snuff out of their mouth. <laughs> Of course, I preach a little bit about tobacco, but I don't preach good snuff. <laughs> Any woman that can back her mouth full of that stuff and walk off, she's dangerous. <laughs> I ain't gonna fool with her. Say it right out there. Leave her to Brother Rex. <laughs> Amen. I was a little boy, about 12 years old, and I found some dental sweet snuff. And I took a little bit of it. And I'm 85, that's been about 70 something years ago, and I can still taste it. <laughs> in a little while, my, old, my younger sister who's in glory, I pulled a little red wagon out there because that boy had a red wagon we play together. And I took that snuff, and a little bit things went to getting bad. <laughs> I mean, it turned bad. And I had to lay down in that wagon. <laughs> and my sister pulled me nearly half a mile back. <laughs> and the truth. I got in the house. Mama come out there scared to this. She said, what's wrong? Someone said, Mama, he's dying. <laughs> and Mama thought I was. And she grabbed me up and carried me in that much of washing my face and sent to the field after daddy and Get here quick, and Daddy come running in. She said, Mac, get him to the doctor. Get him to the doctor. Daddy stood there and looked at me a couple of minutes, and he said, Oh, I said, he'll be all right. <laughs> he went on back to the field. Mama said, you don't care nothing about neither one of these youngins. You don't care if they all die. Well, that was my snuff story. <laughs> Amen. I don't know if that works in with this sandwich. I do know it's impossible for me to dip snuff and walk around <laughs> normal. If God's asked you to do something, it's not impossible for you to do it. Amen. And be a church member and be a faithful church member and don't be somewhere else on Sunday other than the house of God. Amen. Be there. Don't go over to the family reunion till after church. And Brother Rex, if he goes in extra innings, stay till it's over. Amen. And they'll be sitting over there, well, I go up there satisfied with their little religion because now everything's getting cold and they'll come in here after a while. But we'll all be faithful in the house of God. Amen. If the average person was as faithful to their job as they are their church, they'd get fired next week. So that we all be faithful. Am I preaching all right? I say you will be. Listen. Peter said, Lord, bid me to come. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever walked on the water. Mm -hmm. So he done the impossible. And you can do the impossible. Mm -hmm. We may not can walk on the water, but there's something we can do. Right. And the world will say, I believe that's impossible. Yeah. I used to see that girl walk around in the community. 
And she had on such a little bit of clothes, you couldn't tell if there's something inside trying to get out or something outside trying to get in. <laughs> but when she gets right with God, she'll put on some clothes. Amen. 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 You look very nice. You wouldn't look good in a mini skirt. <laughs> Doing the impossible. God called me to preach when I was a young boy. I said, God, this, that's impossible. But I wouldn't take nothing. That's it. Let me return now. That's it. Amen, brother. Sweeter as the days go by. Heaven is sweeter now than it's ever been. Amen. Amen, I stood by my mother when they lowered her casket down to my bed, my sister. <clears throat> but a few weeks ago, it was different. A sun golden daybreak. I'm going to see her again. Amen. My son put her in his arms and said, Mother, if you want to go, go ahead. We'll be all right. And she said, Y'all be all right. I said, You know, yeah. she closed her eyes. Caught that big jet out to glory. And she's over there. And this stone going to bring. Am I? I'm hurting. <laughs> Don't know me last night. She's with Jesus. So you know how I can get close to her? I can get close to Jesus. Amen. Because if she's with him, and I get close to him, I'm going to be pretty close to her. Amen. One of these days, I'm going to see her. I don't think we are. I don't think we're going to marry going to be as the angels. Ben and her are going to be two angels that really suck on each other. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm all of my angels, they may be great, but no, I, I'm the one I'm going to be looking for, and I believe she's going to be looking for me. Amen. Doing the impossible. You coming back tonight? Yeah. Amen. You got something else to do. Well, if you die, you won't get to. <laughs> Fill up this church. Make these folks in this community say, What in the world is going on there? You got a great man of God. Yeah. Great preacher's wife. Yeah. And everybody in here knows that. Everybody in here knows that. If you don't like Brother Rex and you're a member of this church, move your left. Get out of here. <laughs> Say amen right there. How many of you love Brother Rex? Raise your hand. Amen. Unanimous vote. Amen. Come on, Sydney. I'm not done. I'm just to give the introduction. <laughs> Danny, how you done? Don't get up and say a few words. You want to get up and say a few words? <laughs> Come on, sir. Let's just sit here a minute. One more Sunday, it's going to be gone. One more church service, it's going to be gone. One more time we'll get to see each other. We'll never get to see each other. Let's take advantage of what God's done. Amen. I hope it don't offend her, but I love to call that lady Miss Galilee. It's turning me for me. You like who you're sitting by? Amen. You don't get up and move. <laughs> I 
Amen. Some have you this afternoon, and somebody had to lean over you and say, it's all right, go ahead if you need to. Are you ready? Are you ready? As a song, are you ready? For the great judgment. Y'all sing that? Get that song. You don't see me anymore. I'm in glory. Because of the blood that will never lose his time. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. That night, and I went to church that Calvert invited me. I went in there. I didn't intend to get saved. But about the middle of that service, something got to mess with me. I've never had mess with me before. That's right. And all that big talk I've been done, I feel like God just picked me up and hung me over hell and said, what are you going to do about it? I said, I won't get saved. <laughs> and God saved me so good as death. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I know I'm saved. Amen. I don't want to be ugly to anybody here that may have a test. One of the most faithful women I've ever known in church is a pianist at Peace Tree Road Baptist Church. Listen to this. I was there 45 years, and Miss Joanne Britt missed two services Sunday morning, Sunday night, revivals, Wednesday night, conferences, whatever. Christian fellowship, she was there. Miss Linda Johnson's mother had Alzheimer's 12 years and didn't know who she was. And Linda was the organist that led the young people. And Linda missed two Sundays. So I went to her. And I said, now Linda, you're going to have to miss two Sundays every 45 years. I've got to get somebody I can depend on when they walk. I believe I'll be faithful. Yeah. What if next Sunday, Brother Rick, now sometime I know his help's not good, but what if some, next Sunday summer he didn't, he didn't come? And you saw him at the restaurant and said, hey, Brother Rex, hey. well, he said, I just thought I wouldn't go today. <laughs> go every Sunday, and I just thought I'd lay out today. You wouldn't like that, would you? While we stand, you've been a sweet audience. Web 20 now in Alabama. <laughs> if you if you really feel like you're really not ready, not just to be saved, but you're not really ready to serve God in the condition you're in, why don't we just gather around the altar and ask God to help you get ready? Let me tell you, all night long, Brother Rex, last night, God said, Man, you got to preach in Galilee, and I said, Oh, God, give me something. Get my Bible and read something. And after a while, I read that, I signed the paper once, and that's it. Just preach over something. Impossible. Won't you come and have a word of prayer before we close? You'll always be glad you did. Come on. She's going to start singing. He is. There's a great day coming. A day coming. Every day, day, day coming, coming by and by. Amen. In the same that the sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day to come? 71. Oh.
hope do you claim? What reason do you have Amen. to do that you in God's heaven? Amen. Unless you could say, because I have trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, and I believe that he was God's Son, that he died on the cross to pay for my sins, was buried in the grave, rose again. Unless you could say that I have trusted him by faith, he's come into my heart and saved me by his grace. Unless you can say that, you have no ticket to heaven. You have no right to go in. What if that were you? You say, I'm young. Well, it doesn't matter if you're young or old. I've buried, I've buried people from the, from the, from the, literally from the cradle to the last day, last days in the nursing home. Last week I buried a man. 71 years old. He, he could have had many more years left, but he, it was shortened. God took him. What if God were to take you tonight? What if God were to take you? Where would your stand? What would your plea be? There's a judgment day coming. It's a great day of judgment. I'll tell you that for sure. There's a great white throne. The books will be open. Man's account, the, account, the account of your life will be, will be read for everybody in here. The last thing you'll find out is that your name's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You'll not enter into the kingdom of God. Come on this morning. If you touch it, God's touching your heart. Don't let anything stop you. Just step, step out of your seat. Come down here in front and say, Preacher, I need to get saved. We'll help you. Okay, we'll take it from there. We'll help you from there. Just do that as you sing this verse, okay? There's a bright day coming. A bright day coming. There's a bright day coming by and by. Thank you, Father, for uh, just being, uh, allowing us to hear that. You 